Hello and welcome to all of you who have decided to tune in today and hear another edition of Yahusha's Call. We welcome you with our whole hearts and also especially we welcome our subscribers. You are my family. I love you. And uh, I just love reading your comments and your encouragement. Uh, please continue doing so. And before I get into our study, uh, which is we war against spiritual wicked rulers in the darkness, in dark places, we're going to just uh, stop right here and just say that I've been asked to do live either Periscope or Skype uh, services. And so I want you to know that we are working on that as I speak. And uh, just give us maybe a couple of weeks or so, uh, and uh, we will try to set that up so you can uh, be a part of our uh, fellowship uh, live. And so uh, thank you for uh, requesting that, and uh, we will uh, pray and do our best to achieve it. All right, let's get into our lesson. We war against spiritual wicked rulers of darkness. We want... Uh, you to pull up a chair and get ready for some information uh, so you know how uh, to a war against the enemy. Uh, but before we uh, get into this particular lesson, you can get your uh, Bibles open to Ephesians uh, 6, 11 to 13. We'll start there. Uh, meantime, I want to read to you something. I don't know how many of you out there have heard about it, but you know me. I'm, I'm going to tell it. Uh, I want you to know about a certain place. Uh, this place uh, is an American concentration camp that very few people knew about, uh, and we're not going to forget about it. Uh, but I keep telling you that we're in the land of our captivity, and I meant that, we are. And uh, our land is the land of Yasserel, where the synagogue of Satan now lives, dwells, but this is the time of Edom. And until Yahusha delivers uh, his people there, we are here in captivity of sorts. Uh, slavery at best at times, because our young men, as you know, 15 to 25, 70% are slaves uh, in the penal system. But right now, I want to talk to you about a place I won't let you forget. Uh, it's called the Devil's Punch Bowl where 20,000 freed slaves died after being forced into post-slavery concentration camp here in America. And uh, let me read this to you. America's hellish concentration camp. Let me say it again. America's hellish concentration camp. You know, we're always pointing, the people here in these, this country always point the finger at other atrocities in other lands, you know, uh, weapons where they, they um, poison their people, shoot their people, cut their people's heads off, and all kinds of things. But they forget that we had a similar experience. Everybody can talk about their experience, but when we want to talk about our experience here in this country. We're supposed to forget it, let it go, be let bygones be bygones, but I won't do that because those souls cry out under the altar of the Most High for justice. And I feel so inclined and, and moved uh, to take up their cause and not to forget them, the martyrs that suffered so at the hand of their Caucasoid oppressors. America's hellish concentration camp and devil's punch bowl. Following the end of the Civil War, there was a mass exodus, another word, exodus, here we go, of former slaves from the southern plantations. These men, women, and children migrated north in the hopes of building for building new lives for themselves. Migration of former slaves was deeply unacceptable for the former Union soldiers who were bitterly disappointed about the outcome of the brutal war and decided to take their revenge. The most brutal example of this was in Natchez, Mississippi. Natchez experienced an enormous influx in its population following the conclusion of the war, with the vast majority of the new inhabitants being former slaves. In res response, the local people built an encampment at Devil's Punch Bowl and rounded up all of the black people and forced them to enter it. 
Once they were there, they walled off the area and refused to let them out. Inside the devil's punch bowl, the former slaves endured more hellish conditions than they did or had experienced in the brutal southern plantations. Thousands of men and women and children perished because of exhaustion and starvation. The people there were also struck with serious epidemics of diseases. Don uh, Estes says that thousands of people there died of smallpox despite the intense suffering of the people inside the encampment. The former soldiers had no compassion and simply gave the men shovels to bury the dead where they had fallen. The conditions became so intensely bad that the former slaves inside would plead with their white guards to let them return to the plantations. It is very difficult to definitely explain what happened at Devil's Punch Bowl. Much of the evidence about this incident has been gleaned from the oral reports and local people, which mean that, they, that many conclusions have been criticized. Some people have claimed that only a thousand people died. Oh, just a thousand. Could have been 20. Now, just a thousand. Mm. Whereas others have said that the prisoners preferred life there to existence there to the plantation. Lie. As there was no methodical record keeping, of course not, it is very difficult to uh, def uh, definitively dispute these criticism. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, I dispute every criticism. It's the truth. And I'll tell you how you also can know. You type in in YouTube uh, this uh, devil's uh, punch bowl. And uh, there are caucasoids there explaining to you what happened there and why the peaches there are so sweet because of all the dead bodies buried in that area. Our people, our Yisraelites, our Yehudis, our Yehudis. So when I tell you these things, it's only to put these on your mind to let you know where you are so you do not fall asleep and think that you are free. I keep telling you about slavery. I, kept, I read to you the Emancipation Proclamation. I explained it did not end slavery. I want you to investigate it for yourself. Know this so you know how to walk and how to carry yourself in this country. And while I'm there, I think what I'll do is move on. I was going to talk about the spiritual wickedness in rulers, but I think I'm going to do that on the next program. Okay, so I'm going to let me skip that for right now. Let me get into, since I'm on this subject, let me get into why we should not pledge allegiance to anything or anyone but Yah. Let's get into that because I know a lot of you are probably confused. You know, people, oh, you're not a good patriot. Well, I'm not even a really a full citizen, let alone a patriot. I'm a slave. I'm in the land of my captivity, so I do respect uh, uh, this country. I do keep its laws. I don't try to do any maliciousness against these the people uh, at all. Of course not. I was born here. But I just keep uh, an awareness of how my ancestors got here. We didn't come here on vacation and decided to stay. We weren't tourists, all right? Uh, we weren't even refugees, all right? We were enslaved, stolen people, put in chains, and forced here. And until they get out of our land over there in Israel, uh, we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. But one day we will get up out of here. Meantime, I follow the laws like everybody should, but I gotta tell you the truth, okay? Now this is why, Paul writes this to us in, so please go to Romans chapter one, verse one. Paul, a slave of Yahusha Hamashiach, called an apostle and singled out for Yah's good news. Romans 7, 25. I thank Yah through Yahusha Hamashiach, our master. So then, with my mind, I myself am a slave to the law of Yah, but with my flesh to the law of sin. Romans 7, 25. Why am I bringing these two scriptures up? Because Paul takes the low road and understands that he takes his orders from Yah. Therefore, his allegiance is to Yah. A slave has no other allegiance but to its master. All right. 
Let's look at the definition for slave, according to Miriam Dictionary. One, a person held in servitude as the chattel or property of another. One that is completely, number two, one that is completely subservient to a dominating influence. All right, so we fit more in category two. Um, but I want you to know about what I, my heart, where my heart is with this. Uh, this is, has nothing to do with our current president, not at all. My stand, I haven't uh, pledged allegiance to the flag in years, even during Obama's uh, uh, presidency. So this isn't a, a racial thing. It's not a, a patriotic thing in, in, in regards to that. My patriotism belongs to Yahusha. That's what I'm saying. And that's where yours, if you're a Yahudi, should be as well. Um, so this is not a fight on that, because under Obama, I still didn't pledge allegiance. All right. Um, I pray that y'all will uh, continue to use President Trump uh, according to his will, because I see a lot of good for our people, whether it's done on purpose or not, coming out of his presidency. Uh, what sometimes the devil means, well, most I'll say every time, Satan means for evil. Woo, Yah makes it good for his people. And I see many good things coming uh, from, from this presidency. So pray that Yah's will be done. All right, so that got that out of the way. Uh, but let us make it clear. We are slaves to Messiah only. So let's look at Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance, A-L-L-I-A-N-C-E. First two letters, A-L. Is another way, a way of spelling God, all right? So when you pledge allegiance to the flag, it's the God of America that you're pledging allegiance to. Mm -hmm. Francis Julius Bellamy was a Christian socialist minister and author, best known to the writing of the original version of the U.S. Pledge of Allegiance, Wikipedia. He was born in, uh, on May 18th, 1855, Mount Morris, New York, died August 28, 1931, in Tampa, Florida. His nationality, I want you to hear his nationality. This ought to wake you up. American. That's a fascist tool. You don't know that, but it is. Now we have to be identified. Are you African American, Asian American, Latin American, Mexican American? No, but he's just American. So we, we know where we stand. I want you to catch these things so you're not ignorant of who you, who, who you are and your surroundings. Let's look at the Pledge of Allegiance, please. The Pledge of Allegiance was written in August 1892 by the Socialist Minister Francis Bellamy, as I once uh, have already stated, and originally read this way, I pledge allegiance to the flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation invisible with liberty and justice for all. In 1923, the words, the flag of the United States of America was added at that time. And they, it said, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. In 1954, in response to the communist threat of the times, President Eisenhower encouraged Congress to add the words under God. So that's how under God got there, creating the 31st word pledge, 31 word pledge, I should say, uh, even though uh, Bellamy's daughter objected to its alteration. And so now it reads, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Um, you may say, well, don't we have to pledge allegiance? Aren't we American citizens? Well, section four of the flag code states this. The Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible, with liberty and justice for all, should be uh, rendered by standing at attention, facing the flag, with the right hand over the heart, so on and so forth. The original way to stand before the flag was actually as, uh, uh, it was this way. You put your, I'll see if I can see it. 
all right? The way Hitler's people did. And then after a while, they changed it to the heart, all right? So it was also something they did for fundraising at, at the beginning of this. So it, it's a lot of confusion in it. And let me tell you uh, something about it. You don't have to do it. And it is not against the law not to pledge allegiance. Uh, it was ruled uh, by the federal courts uh, that we do not have to do that. So if it's not something that we're breaking the law, and if it was, I still wouldn't do it. I'd have to go to jail because uh, we're not going to do it. And let me tell you another reason why. Let me give you the definition for uh, allegiance. The obligation of a feudal vassal to his lineage, obligated to render feudal alliance or allegiance and service, or lord, which means master. The fidelity or qu uh, quality, all right, of your life, okay, is promised under this allegiance or state of being faithful in fidelity as one is to a wife owed by a subject or citizen to the sovereign. Sovereign is like a king or government. So the pledge of allegiance to the country is, uh, is practically a marriage vow. Supreme, again, back to the Supreme Court, held in fact that the government can neither require a student or to participate in the pledge nor compel them to engage in what amounts to implicit expression by standing at respectful attention while the flag uh, salute is being administered. And that goes with the, our um, sports figures right now who feel like uh, they don't want to salute the flag at this time or say the Pledge of Allegiance this time. They are perfectly uh, legal, legal, legal. Now they want to change it, but it's, they were legal. They still are legal. Let me read to you what uh, our, uh, one of our famous figures in our community uh, has said, uh, quoted from Jackie Robinson. Um, African-American baseball pioneer Jackie Robinson wrote in his autobiography that he couldn't sing the anthem or salute the flag because I know that I am a black man in a white world. Let me read to you, uh, uh, Kapat, Kaper, I think his name is Kapernik, and he was the one who they fired, got rid of when he didn't salute the flag. Uh, he, forgive me if I didn't pronounce his name correctly, I'm not a sports person, I'm sorry. Uh, previously of San Francisco 49ers. He says, right, racialized oppression and dehumanization is woven into the very fabric of our nation the effects of which can be seen in the lawful lynching, lawful lynching of black and brown people by the police and the mass incarceration, which I spoke of earlier, of black and brown lives in the prison industrial complex. Of course, they don't like it, so they've blackballed him. But I believe we all ought to be blackballed and none of us to call ourselves uh, Yehudis should be pledging allegiance to the flag. Nobody from Yisrael should be doing it. No born again understanding person should do it. It's not your country. You were born here. But watch how quick they can take your citizenship from you. Let's go to the word and see what the word says about this. Numbers 30 and verse 2. When a man makes a vow to the master, Yahuwah, or swears an oath to put himself under an obligation, he must not break his word. He must do whatever he has promised. Yah holds that very endearing. You watch what you put your allegiance to. Matthew 5, 33 to 37 says, again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to Yahusha, what you have sworn. But I say unto you, do not take it, uh, I'm sorry, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of Yah, or earth, for it is his footstool, or by Yer Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let simply your response be yea or nay. 
yes or no. 1 Corinthians 7.22, for he who is called by Yahuwah as a slave of Yahusha's free men, likewise he who is called as a free man in Hamashiach's, or is Hamashiach's slave. 2 Corinthians 4, 5, for we are not proclaiming ourselves by Yahusha Hamashiach as, as Lord and ourselves as your slaves because of Yahusha. And remember, uh, we're not to bow before any other entity as uh, we learned from um, the story of Esther and how the servants of the king bowed down and paid homage to Haman, but Mordecai would not. It's the same, same thing. The whole point of this teaching today is to teach you, one, it's against Yah's law. It's against Yah's uh, word to pledge allegiance to anything. You shall have no other Yah before me. Your pledge is to him. Your pledge is not to a country, especially the country where you are a slave yourself or you're in a place of captivity. All right? And this is not a hate speech because I, I don't hate this place. Not at all. I don't hate the people here. But I know who I am. And I know what I must do to please my Yah. And what you need to understand is that Satan, I'm sure, snickers whenever we do this thing. Because he knows who we are when we don't know who we are. But when you stand at attention, and I do believe in standing, because I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, I just don't pledge allegiance. But when they say stand, I stand, but I'm very quiet. And I put no hand on no heart. I only, he said, you shall have no other Yah before me. And that's what I live. And that's what I want you to live. As Yah's people, you should take note of what I'm saying to you today. Because when you are not coming out from among them and, and, and being separate from them, then you are a part of them. And these atrocities that are going on all over the world, all over the world, all over the earth are a sign, judgment, heavy judgment is coming. And I wouldn't want to be in the path of any of it. Hold on to what you understand. And gleam more understanding. You do not have to pledge no allegiance to no flag that hung your people, disemboweled your people, maimed and raped your people, and still doing it today. No, I have no allegiance to this flag. But I am a law-abiding citizen. And I do not encourage anyone to be other than. But I want you to know, for your information, who you are and what Yah is expecting of us. It, it doesn't matter what the king wants. If the, the king of the land or the president or the emperor, whoever they call themselves, are, if they're asking me to do something that my father has told me not to do, and that's where I'm coming from. I am not to do it. And neither are you. So I've changed this theme a bit. And uh, we will get into the next, uh, our next program will be on the war against spiritual wickedness. Because really it all is inclusive. Because we're living in a wicked time. And we're in the midst of a wicked, wicked world. And this, these the, uh, laws are established not for you, but against you. All right, you need to understand that and watch yourself. You know, the word says turn the other cheek, but he never did. Our master never told us to turn our backs, to be blind. He said, wake up. He said, awaken. He's, he wants us to be alert. Know who your friends are. Know who your enemies are. Because if you don't, you're going to get broadsided like many have, thinking that they were something in this country that they were not. Even the president of this nation received 
uh, from the far right and these evangelicals and a whole bunch of them, all these, a lot of these racist groups, n no respect. So it had nothing to do with the, with the type of person he was, but the color of his skin. And I didn't agree with everything he said or did either. So take that to heart. No pledging, no allegiance to anyone or anything. We are not idol worshipers. We have one Yah, Yahua, the Most High. And that's who we serve. And that's who we give our allegiance to. Mark my words this day and watch what you're doing and serve the one true Yah. Would you do that? I believe you will. I believe you're convicted by the Holy Spirit on this. And I believe you're going to join me and so many others who understand this truth. Look up. Look up the devil's fishbowl and read up on it for yourself. It's, not, it's on the Internet. YouTube has, has a couple of good uh, videos on it. Watch them. And see then, can you pledge allegiance? Okay, would you do that? All right, I'm going to let you go now. And I uh, look forward to talking to you on the next episode. And until then, remember what I always tell you. You go with your Usha. Why do I say that? Because you know what? If you'll go with him, if you'll obey his commandments and his precepts, he will always be and go with you. He's just that kind of y'all. Until next time. Bye-bye.